everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Jedi Amanda here, and today I'm finally going to show you all how I made my katana from Mortal Kombat 11. This is going to be a three-part series for this, I'm not going to call it a cosplay tutorial per se, because you'll know why in a second, um, but I am breaking this outfit into, or this cosplay video, into three parts. The first part will be the fans, the first part will be, or the second part will be the outfit, and the third part will be the mask. This video is exclusively on the fans. The first thing I want to go ahead and say is that I apologize for the lack of video that you will see in this video. Um, somehow, somewhere, sometime, I accidentally deleted a lot of the video footage for this whole outfit making, specifically for the fans and for the first part of the bodice making. And it really stinks, but I do have some photos, so I will talk about it as you see some kind of work in progress videos or work in progress photos in this video. The first thing I want to show you guys is the inspiration for the fans. I actually chose the Deadly Flow. That's such a strange like combination of words for fans. But anyways, her Deadly Flow uh, fan option for Mortal Kombat 11, mainly because I thought they were pretty. <laughs> And another reason is that I'm pretty sure I knew by looking at them that I could replicate them easier. Um, a lot of the fans in the video that you are seeing to the left of me, I said in the video, um, they they look kind of hard to replicate. And not necessarily that it's, it's out of people's range to repl replicate. I'm just not a huge prop maker. So I try to stick in my wheelhouse of what I have access to and what I can create. And that's pretty much craft wood, warbla, and silk and paint. That being said, the main materials that I used for these are wood, specifically balsa wood, black warbla, and silk dupioni from Silk Baron. And I'll get to more of those details as we move through the video. With Mortal Kombat 11, the NetherRealm Studios decided to give the characters like super, super cool customizations. And I, instead of using her story, um, fans, the ones in the playthrough, I wanted to get a little bit more fun and that's why I chose a different different fan, more or less to say, and a different mask that she wears through the store play of the game. Plus, look at all the pretty flowers! See? Pretty flowers. And I wanted to paint, too, because painting's fun, right? So the first thing you're seeing right now is me actually drawing out the design. I actually do have this design available to buy on my store if you would like to make your own Katana fans, specifically the Deadly Flow ones. It is a digital download, and if you go to my website, JediMana.com, they will be available to purchase. Also, they also make very good base fan, um, if you wanted to, like a fan blade and the silk part in the middle, if you wanted to do this for any other, other fans. Um, I would suggest it. However, you don't have to buy it from me. You can draw it out yourself. And so I'm showing you right here in the video how I drew it out myself. The biggest tip I tell people when they are drawing out designs or trying to do something from their head or trying to do something from a game is to draw it out small. I actually do this for a lot of my cosplays, whether it's dressmaking, whether it's prop making, I'll make a miniature version of it. I will take an idea of it, make it half, three, quarter times the scale, the scale of it and craft it out with some maybe some tape and some cardboard and see if it works first before I move into the actual materials. That way you're not wasting material if you do it wrong or, you know, it's a better, it's an easier way to flesh out your ideas first besides just going straight into the actual design. So that's what I did here. I drew out the design of the pattern in small and then I was like, ooh, that looks good. Then I scaled it up. Voila, made the fan pattern. Like I said earlier, the materials that I used for this were balsa craft wood. You can buy them at any kind of craft store. I'm not gonna necessarily suggest balsa wood for this. Um, with this whole build, I did struggle with it a bit. I had some issues. Um, actually, when I was competing as Katana, I dropped my fans and two of the blades actually broke and I had to tape it together before I was on stage, which was really fun. But I used balsa wood covered in warbla for this. You can still do that. It's totally fine. They're just a little more fragile. I would suggest going up into maybe a different type of wood, like maybe uh, basswood or even actual hardwood uh, to make these because they're only about a quarter inch thick and all you need to do really is to sand them down before you cover them in warbla or not cover them in warbla at all. Once I had the tin blades cut out, I sanded and beveled the edges to ready for covering it in warbla. 
I used black warbler for this project instead of regular warbler, mainly because it is a smoother look at the end finish before you paint, so you don't have to sand it down as much to get that real smooth flat, that smooth, not flesh, <laughs> that smooth finish for the blades to make them look like they're super sharp. I cut out 10 blades with extra set seam allowance to the edges um, for the warbler pieces, and then I flipped over and did the opposite side for 10 more pieces. So together I had 20 pieces to sandwich the blades in. I used a heat gun to sandwich them together and then I trimmed off the seam allowance, thus making warbler covered blades. Ba -boom. Then the blades were done. Next, let's move on to the silk and what I did for that. I used silk dupioni fabric for this because I knew it's a very, well, silk is a very strong fabric and this is gonna have a lot of, my fans have a lot of snap and kind of action to them. So I needed a very strong, not stretchy fabric to be able to hold the action as I snap these things in and out. Specifically, I bought them from my awesome favorite fabric store, Silk Baron, and they are in the, the fabric is in the periwinkle color. I really love this fabric, guys. It's super strong. It's super awesome. Holds paint. Great fabric. And it's also really pretty <laughs> because working with silk is really nice. So as you're seeing in the video, I did draw out the pattern in paper first to check the size and dimension of the actual silk arch piece that's going in the fans. Then I cut two layers, sandwich them together, stitch on three sides, flip it inside out, kind of like you're making like a pillowcase, and then sew down one edge. Pressed it in between to have some nice crisp edges. Two layers because it's I wanted it to be strong. You can interface between the second between the two layers. Mm, I would suggest that. I forgot about it. It worked out fine in my case, but you're gonna want this to be very flat, being able to hold the action of these blades. Once you have the fabric cut out and sewed together, make sure you press down all the edges and it's now time to paint. These are the paints that I specifically used to paint all of the detailing on the fans themselves. They are Jacquard Fabric Paints, which is another one of my favorite brands, uh, the Lumiere series, which has a metallic sheen to it. Really awesome for cosplay, highly recommend. Um, and different silvers and pewter colors. I also used Plaid paint products, which is an awesome really paint, I highly recommend, in their brushed metal black uh, color. Um, they're really awesome as well, and they work on fabric. And then I used just a basic blue acrylic, mainly because I didn't want to go out and buy some, and I already had it. So following the designs of the Deadly Flow, still weird to say, the Deadly Flow option uh, katana fans, I masked off the edges. Um, and painted on the silver paint first, as you can see here. That was the first thing I did on the top and inside edges, or bottom inside edge of the arch of the fabric. Once that was nice and dry, I did it, I did do it to both sides. So remember you're painting pretty much four, four surfaces here. I did a gradient wash of blue acrylic from the top down to the middle to give it that real dimension look. And also that's what I think they did for her design. It's really hard to tell in game. I don't know why. The game is very dark. After the blue was done, I then painted all the pretty flowers. So now the silk is done, nice and painted and ready to go. I taped it in, as you're seeing in the video photo here to me, to my left. I taped it in using some, some light tack masking tape in where the, it's kind of hard to explain this in words, but where I would know or where the fabric would fold and this is an important step because if you want these fans to have that real snap action feel, you need to have the fabric pressed into the action and it's going to um, ultimately fold back into. So it's hard to say, but once I was able to sandwich them between the blades, as you can see here, I took a press cloth and my iron and pressed the creases into the fabric. And that kind of gives me a map on where to place the blades later on uh, when I rivet them together and also makes it nice and flat because you want these to be flat more or less you don't want them to be really bulbous um, and also just it helps with that like I said that action and, and flipping it out. So now I have the silks done Post those aside let's talk about painting the blades. You can go about painting this honestly however you want. I had a lot of trial and error with this. Um, I used all kinds of different paints to give that super knife look, uh, but ultimately I'm gonna suggest this. Use a filler primer spray on the blades first. You can see in this video, us spraying them outside. And what a filler primer is, is it gives a little bit of a grit when you spray it onto a surface. Therefore, you can sand it down. And sanding it down makes it super, super smooth so you can paint on top of that to give it 
the blade feel, the knife feel, you know, to cut your enemies in half. Once your filler primer was on, go ahead and sand, <laughs> sand it down. It's going to take a while. Sand all edges of these blades. Trust me, this step is definitely worth it. You want it to be nice, nice and smooth. You don't want it to be gritty or anything because Warble unfortunately has that left behind. So the, fill the filler primer will help you achieve that. Once you have them all sanded down, now it's time to paint. Regular acrylic paint. I used uh, plaid acrylic paints in the Brush Metal series. They're really, really awesome and they are very, very well pigmented and show up beautifully on stage. The Brush Metal series comes in all kinds of different colors. I mainly use the black and silver ones. Then I sealed it in Mod Podge. <laughs> Simple, you can seal it in any kind of sealer you want, Plasti Dip, you can airbrush some sealer on it, but honestly, I went and just did it in um, gloss or matte. Honestly, I cannot remember <laughs> which Mod Podge I used after I made all of the details on the blades. Specifically, in the game, her blades look like they are beveled or three-dimensional, and I knew going into this because I've actually made her Mortal Kombat 3 blades before that if you make the blades dimensional they have a very hard time closing and so I played a little bit of trick of the eye painting techniques to get it to look three-dimensional with the different techniques that I used on the blades that you can see. Okay so now you have all of your components you're ready for assembly. Bear with me here it's kind of hard to explain but we'll get through this. Now that everything is fully dry, we're going to drill the holes in for the connection piece down at the bottom. Now, you will need a large screw. <laughs> a large screw. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six washers per blade and a lock nut. You'll have to times that by two, it's obviously two blades, but that's what you'll need to have these together. Now, if you don't know what a lock nut is, it's basically, hard, easy to say, a nut that locks itself in place. Because you'll be doing all of the action of the blades, opening and closing them, a regular nut will just screw itself off and will fall off, therefore your blades will come apart. The locking nut locks in place. So now it doesn't, but, you're a, but it still allows you to open and close the fan blades. Washers in between, so your fans, your fan blades are not riding up against each other as well. So make sure when you are done, with your blades, you measure out for the screw and the lock nut and then go get them. You don't necessarily want to get them before if you don't know how long it's going to be till it finally ends. Uh, you don't know how long it's going to be until you have everything assembled and ready to go. Okay, you now have your holes in your blades and you're ready to assemble. With the washers in between each blade, go ahead and put the screw and the lock nut and put them together. See how you like it? Work it a little bit. Don't do it too much because your silk and your blades are not together yet. But make sure everything is nice and kosher, lay it out, take a look at it. Now here's where a big mistake that I did with this whole build that frustrated me for months. I glued the fabric to the blades with hot glue. Don't recommend, don't recommend that at all actually. It was terrible, it ended up peeling up my paint um, the fabric would never stick to the blades. It was awful. Do not recommend, do not recommend. What I did end up doing towards the end, I got the idea, I riveted them together. I highly, highly, highly suggest doing this if you want that snap action that Katana has in the game. If you wanna be able to be on stage or on the cosplay floor and you wanna shoo shoo, you will need to rivet these together. Contact submit might work, I didn't try it, in, go for it if you want, but I suggest riveting, riveting them together. Now up close, you can kind of see in this video, I have, I think, yes, three rivets per blade. Two on the top, one on the bottom. Before you go any further and you want to rivet them together, lay it out, mark where your, the rivets are going to go because you're going to be drawing or putting the holes in the fabric and the blade differently. You're going to be using a Dremel to drill through the blade, just like you did the hole at the bottom to place where your rivet's going to be. And you'll be using an owl, which is a big long poker. <laughs> it looks like this. It looks like this. You'll wanna use this to make the hole in your fabric because if you drill, <laughs> if you drill in the fabric with your Dremel, it's not gonna work out and it's gonna be a mess. Trust me, I tried. Okay, so now you have your holes ready for the rivets. If the holes in the Dremel, or the Dremel, ugh, you have the holes in the blades and your holes 
in your fabric. Next, rip it them together, old fashioned way. Get a hammer, put it on some stable surface, and boop, 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 them together. Honestly, once you have those in, your blades are done. I ended up painting over them to kind of, you know, mask the, their big silver blade or rivets on these blades that obviously aren't that. And it worked out. And that's how I made the katana blades from Mortal Kombat 3. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you would like to make your blades and you don't necessarily want to make this version, you can easily adhere the pattern that I have available on my website to pretty much any of her blades to make your fans. Please join me next for parts two and three of my Katana Mortal Kombat 11 build series. They'll be out next week and the week after. If you loved this video, please like and share it with your friends, especially your Mortal Kombat friends. And don't forget to sub to my channel. I record and post all videos pertaining my cosplay makings to here on my channel, so you'll see a lot of stuff coming up. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.